فاشرف بي الاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم As for the issue of arrogance and pride, فهذا من أعمال القلوب. It's the actions of the heart. Also, he said he did not represent Salafia. And Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, والكلام في الناس يجب أن يكون بعلم وعدل لا بجهل وظلم كحال أهل البدع. Then the brother went on to say, this is not the debating of the Salafis. These people are fools. سبحان الله. Look at what Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal said, and then he read it in Arabic. And then he said after that, to abandon the innovations and to abandon sitting with the people of desires. This man sat with him out of his arrogance and his pride. He did not represent Salafiyyah. As for the issue of arrogance and pride, فَهَذَا مِنْ أَعْمَالِ الْقُلُوبِ It's the actions of the heart. اِطَّلَعَ الْغَيْبَ أَمِ اتَّخَذَ عِنْدَ الرَّحْمَانِ أَحْدَ Was he shown, our brother Abu Khadija, was he shown the unseen and he saw what was in my heart? Or... Did I say it to him and tell him that I was arrogant and I did it out of pride? I can assure you I didn't say it to him. Also, he said he did not represent Salafiyyah and he brought out the statement again that he said before. Um, I want to talk about a bit of issues here, inshallah ta'ala. One issue is that um, the issue of, he said, to abandon the innovations and to abandon sitting with the people of, in, of desires. So it's a matter that enters hajar, boycotting and not sitting with the people of innovations. Again, brothers, the, bro the problem that our brothers have and they continuously, continuously keep coming with is that they think boycotting is the only thing that the Sharia has set regarding the innovators. When we, de when we deal with the innovators, there are two ways to deal with them, and both of them can be cures. Both of them. Hajar and ta'lif. Boycotting and also bringing them close and softening ourselves in the way we deal with them. Or hajar, boycotting them, turning away from them, and etc. Both of them are cures. But they are cures when they are put in the right place. Boycotting benefits at times and at some times ta'lif benefits and that is used. But it's ignorance to always use boycotting and it's also ignorance to always use ta'lif, to always think that you can bring them close. The matter revolves around what? Mura'atul masalih wal mafasid. The benefits and the harm are weighed. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah tells us in his Majmu'a al-Fatawi, he says, فَالْهِجْرَةُ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ هِيَ مِنَ الْأَعْمَالِ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا The boycotting, are the legislation of boycotting are from the actions which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commanded us and His Messenger commanded us. فَالطَاعَةُ So these are actions of obedience. So now he's going to give you a qa'idah, a principle. فَالطَاعَةُ The obedience. لا بد it is necessary أن تكون خالصة لله it has to be sincerely for the sake of Allah وأن تكون موافقة لأمره and it also has to be in accordance to the command of Allah تبارك وتعالى and His Messenger it has to be so it has to have إخلاص and متابعة الرسول you have to be sincere when you boycott and you also have to boycott in accordance to the Sharia وَأَنْ تَكُونَ مُوَافِقَةٌ لِأَمْرِهِ فَتَكُونُ خَالِصَةً لِلَّهِ صَوَابًا It has to be with sincerity and then it has to be, it also has to be done in accordance to the sunnah. فَمَنْ هَجَرَ anyone who boycotts لِهَوَى نَفْسِهِ because of the whims and the desires. He does it for his own whims and desires. أو هجر أو he boycotts. هَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَأْمُورٍ بِهِ أو he boycotts. A boycotting that is not legislated. كان خارجا that this this person will be one who has exited عن هذا he has exited the obedience of Allah and his messenger وما أكثر وما أكثر ما تفعل ما تفعل النفوس and how much is that which the soul does in following its desires 
or not following the legislation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when to boycott, who to boycott, how to boycott. A lot does the soul do this. Vannan assuming annaha taf'aluhu ta'atan lillahi thinking that it does it in obedience to Allah. It's boycotting, but it's doing it either for what reason? Hawalli nafsihi, there's desires in him, he's, doing, he's only doing it out of desires. Or he's boycotting a boycott, which is ghayra ma'murin bihi, the sharia hasn't commanded you, to, commanded you to do this boycotting. And so it's important that the person learns this and that they register this in their mind. That the boycotting is a ta'ah, an obedience. And every action in the sharia, it needs those two pillars. Khalisatan lillahi. It has to be done for the sake of Allah. It can't be done for what? It can't be hajrun lihawa nafsihi. It can't be because of your whims and desires. And it also has to be what? In accordance to the commands of Allah and His Messenger. Now, inshallah, I'm going to give you guys an example. Al Imam Al Ajuri, rahimahullah, in his Kitab al Sharia, Al Imam Al Darimi also narrated it that there was a man by the name of Sabir ibn Islin. Sabir ibn Islin. Sulaiman ibn Yasarin, he said, Anna Rajula min Bani Tamim yukalu lahu Sabir ibn Islin, Qadib al Medina. A man from the people of Bani Tamim, his name used to be called Sabir ibn Islin, was his name. He came to the city of Medina. وكانت عنده كتب. He used to have books. فجعل يسأل عن عن متشابه القرآن. He started to ask about the ambiguous verses. He started to pick verses which were ambiguous. That's what he did. فبلغ ذلك عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه. So he was taking the ambiguous verses and he was testing the people with it. And Allah تبارك وتعالى. What did he say to us? وَالَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٍ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُ لَمَا تَشَابَهُ The people whose heart is sick, were deviated, they will follow the verses which are ambiguous. As for the people of knowledge, as the people who are rooted in knowledge, they bring the ambiguous verses to the verses which are clear-cut, the ayat which are muhkam. So this individual, Sabir ibn Islin, he started to sit around and ask about these ambiguous verses. So the matter reached Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Umar requested فَبَعَثَ إِلَيْهِ He sent somebody to get him. Sabir ibn Islin. Umar said, somebody bring me, bring me him. Whilst they were bringing him, he prepared وَقَدْ أَعَدَّ لَهُ عَرَاجِينَ Abu Umar prepared and branches or from date trees which he got and when the man entered onto Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu Umar said to him man anta who are you and he said ana abdullahi i am the slave of allah sabir faqala umar umar then said to him wa ana and i also am the slave of allah umar ibn khattab thumma ahwa ilayhi umar then he went towards him faja'ala yadribuhu umar beatin bi tilka al-arajin with the sticks that uh, and the uh, branches which he prepared he beat him with it so much فَمَا زَالَ يَضْرِبُهُ حَتَّى شَجَّهُ He hit him so much until he cracked his forehead. فَجَعَلَ دَمُّ يَسِيرُ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ Until blood started to gush from this individual, Sabir. And then he said, حَسْبُكَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Stop, O oh Amir al-Mu'minin. Because Umar hit the place where the shaytan was sending the revelation to him. فَقَدْ وَاللَّهِ ذَهَبَ الَّذِي كُنْتُ أَجِدُهُ Wallahi, the thing that I found in myself has now gone. This, where the place where shaitan was pouring in me, has gone. Naam. Fi ra'si in my head. Umar hit the spot. So this story, it shows you that Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his time and the era that Umar was at, that anyone who went against the religion, or anyone who started to deviate, the way in which he was dealt with was physical. And Umar could physically harm him. And then even after that, Umar commanded the people to boycott him. And everyone was told not to speak to him. 
if we compare Umar radiallahu an, who is the leader of the Muslims, how he dealt with this individual, Sabir ibn Islin, we compare it to Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa al Yashkuri, ibn Kawa al Khariji, how Ali dealt with him. Let's put that in comparison. Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa al Yashkuri, ibn Kawa al Khariji, he's known as ibn Kawa. Ibn Jarir al Tabari narrated in the tafsir of the ayah. وجعلنا الليل والنهار آيتين فبحونا آية الليل إلى آخر الآية. He brought that Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه was sitting one day, and he said to the people who who he was sitting with, he said to them, سلوا عما شئتم ask whatever you guys want. فقام ابن كوا this man ابن كوا stood up. فقال he said السواد الذي في القمر What is the black thing inside the moon? فق- and he, these were from the mutashabihat. They were from the ambiguous matters. He wants to oppose the ayah وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ Ali realized that this man was following the mutashabihat. Ali رضي الله عنه said to him قَاتَلَكَ اللَّهِ May Allah kill you. هَلَّا سَأَلْتَ Why didn't you ask عَنْ أَمْرِ دِينِكَ وَآخِرَتِكَ why didn't you ask a matter pertaining to your religion and a matter pertaining to the hereafter? Why didn't you ask? Dalik, that which you're asking is Mahul Layl, is the wiping of the night. Now, if you look at the statement of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu or the way Ali dealt with it, Ali, all he said was, Allah. Why didn't Ali stand up and beat the man the way that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu beat him? Why didn't Ali do that? Ibn Taymiyyah is going to tell us. Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, وَقَدْ تَكَلَّمَ الصَّحَابَةُ فِي تَفْسِيرِهَا مِثْلَ عَلِيِّ بْنَ أَبِي طَالِمْ مَعَ بْنُ كَوَّا The ayah, وَجْعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحُونَ آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجْعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً لِتَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابَ Ma'abnu Kawa with this individual, Ibn Kawa. Lama sa'alahu anha when he asked him about it. Kariha su'alahu Ali disliked his question, his aunt, his question. Ali, he disliked the question of Ibn Kawa. Lima ra'ahu min qasadihi because of that which he saw from his intention. Lakin but, Ali yun kanat ra'iyatuhu. Ali's people in which he was controlling in Kufa, they were mutalawiyat. مُلْتَوِيَةٌ uh, عَلَيْهِ لَمْ يَكُنْ مُطَاعًا They weren't those who were obedient to him. They weren't those who were uh, uh, adhering to him. The people of Kufa. لَمْ يَكُنْ مُطَاعًا فِيهِمْ Ali wasn't one they obeyed. They didn't listen to him. هَا فِيهِمْ طَاعَةُ عُمَر The way that Umar was obeyed. حَتَّى يُؤَدِّبَهُ So he can teach him a manner and bring him to his senses. He can't do it like Umar. Because Umar's time, people were listening to him. They were obeying him. But Ali's time, things have changed. And the time between Ali and Umar wasn't that long. So this shows us brothers and sisters, the way we deal with the innovators, the way we deal with them, it changes from time to time and it changes from places to places. It isn't that Umar beat them, so we beat them. It isn't that this scholar boycotted them, we boycott them. The, mas- the issue differs from time to time. And Imam Ahmed said that, rahimahullah. Ishaq ibn Mansur, he has a book where he asks Imam Ahmed questions. It's called Masail Ishaq ibn Mansur Ali Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Questions that Ishaq ibn Mansur put to Imam Ahmed. Ishaq ibn Mansur said to Imam Ahmed, Man qala al-Qur'an makhluq Anyone who says that the Qur'an is created What do we do with this person? Ishaq ibn Mansur asked that question To Imam Ahmed Imam Ahmed said Al-Hiq bihi kulla baliyah Every evil put, put, Throw on him Every evil there is Deal with him in that way Throw every evil to him then Ishaq ibn Mansur, he said, Qul to I said, Kafara, is that person, did he become a disbeliever? Imam Ahmed said, E, wallah, by Allah he has, he's a kafir. Wallahi, 
He, wallahi, Imam Ahmed said. Qultu, I then said to him, فَيُظْهِرُ الْعَدَاوَةَ لَهُمْ أَمْ يُدَارِيهِمْ should he, should he show them enmity and hate or should he do mudarat, speak to them in a nice way? Imam Muhammad said, Ahlu Khurasan la yaquuna bihim. Ahlu Khurasan, they are not able to do that. As Haqam ibn Mansur said, it was as though he was trying to say, you darihim. It was as though he was trying to say that they will deal with them in a soft, kind way. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ahmad he gave a different ruling to Khurasan over the other places. And that shows something. That shows, it shows a lot. Ibn Taymiyyah said, فَفَرْقٌ بَيْنَ الْأَمَاكِنِ الَّتِي كَثُرَتْ فِيهَا الْبِدَعَ There's a difference between the places where the innovation is a lot. كَمَا كَثُرَ الْقَدَرُ بِالْبَصْرَةِ Like the Qadr increased in Basra, the, the deviated sect. The Qadriya in Basra were a lot. وَالتَّنْجِيمُ بِخُرَسَانِ and the Tanjim was a lot in Khurasan. What Tashayyu' Shi'ism was a lot in Kufa. And the places that didn't have all of that are different. The places where the innovation were a lot. And the places that don't have it are different. And also, the ones who are boycotting they themselves differ in terms of their strength and in terms of their ability, in terms of their number and in terms of how much and how little they are. So the places governs whether we boycott. And also the number governs whether we boycott. And also the strength governs whether we boycott. That is the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. The places where the innovation is a lot. Is not like the places where the innovation is little and the sunnah is stronger. So these are matters which I believe that need to be looked into and they should be brought together. And some people, what they do to you is they will say to you, Imam Muhammad said this, Al Hiku bi kulli baliya. They will say to you, Abu Ayyub al Sakhtiyari said this, and they will say to you, Muhammad ibn Sirin said this. And all of these statements are the speeches of the Salaf. Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. But how do we deal with them? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Rahimahullah, wa kathirun min ajwibati al-imam Ahmad wa ghayri, min al-a'imma. A lot of the answers of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in regards to boycotting. In regards to boycotting. And other than him from the scholars, when they said don't stick with them, boycott them, the statement of the other scholars in this field, خرج على سؤال سائل قد علم المسؤول حاله أو خرج خطابا لمعين قد علم حاله فيكون بمنزلة قضايا الأعيان الصادرة عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وإنما يثبت حكمها في نظيرها فإن أقواما جعلوا ذلك عاما The questions that came from Imam Muhammad and other than him from the Aimma, the scholars all of their questions that came out Regarding a question of a questioner, a person put a question directed to Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed knew the person who's been asked, and so he gave a verdict regarding that particular individual. Are you with me? And this is an addressing which is specific to the person who Imam Ahmed was addressed was talking about, or the or the other aima, in which he knew their situation, and he said Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And this will become qadai al-a'yan, situations which are specific to those particular individuals. Like those which came from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he would sometimes address a particular person and that particular thing would only apply to that individual or anyone who has something in common with him. إِنَّمَا يَثْبُتُ حُكْمُهَا فِي نَذِيرِهَا فَإِنَّ أَقْوَامًا But some people, they made boycotting they made the matter general based on Imam Ahmed's speech or the, based on Muhammad ibn Sirin's speech or based on Abu, Abu Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani or other than them thinking that this is a qa'idatun muttarida it's something that is applied is it an innovator? yes, boycott him straight away and that isn't the case and that is ignorance of the position of the Ahlul Sunnah 
Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, when he extracted the benefits of um, the fawaid of Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And in Treaty of Hudaybiyah, what happened was, the messenger sat with the disbelievers and he sat with them to reach a contract with them, a treaty with them. And when he signed the treaty, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he done it for the better, uh, so the benefit that was in it for the religion. And Allah referred to it as an opening, a fath. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala referred to it as a victory. He said, inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. Ibn al-Qayyim, when he extracts some benefits regarding the fact that the Prophet sat with the disbelievers and he met a conclusion with them, Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَمِنْهَا from the benefits is أَنَّ الْمُشْرِكِينَ when the pagans وَأَهْلُ الْبِدَعْ and the people of innovation وَالْفُجُورِ وَالْبُغَاتِ وَالظَّلَمَةِ the criminals, the wrongdoers, those who have exceeded their limits. إِذَا طَلَبُوا if they request أَمْرًا أَيْمَتَ يُعَظِّمُونَ فِي حُرْمَةً مِنْ حُرَمَاتِ اللَّهِ that they are honoring a sacred religious matter they're going to. Ajibu alayhi. You obey them for it. Ujibu alayhi ilayhi wa u'tu wa u'inu alayhi. They are obeyed when they call us to that. We help them and we aid them and we support them in this. If they are doing what? Yu'adhimuna fihi. They are honoring. A religious matter, they are, or, or, they are honoring Allah's religion. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh said, the benefits that we take from it is that when the innovator calls us and he's honoring the religion of Allah, then we obey him, we aid him, and we support him in it. Naam. Then our brother Abu Khadija, Hadahullah, he said, um, when Abdullah ibn Abbas entered amongst the Khawarij, he did not enter that except he established a hujjah upon them. He didn't, not to make friends with them, not to make some sort of unity with them, to refute them and to establish the hujjah so that they may return back to the truth. Now my amazement here is that I didn't sit there to make unity with them. And I didn't sit there to become friends. And for our brother to think that, it's amazing. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, وَالْكَلَامُ فِي النَّاسِ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ بِعِلْمٍ وَعَدْلٍ لَا بِجَهْلٍ وَظُلْمٍ كَحَالِ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ وَالْكَلَامُ Speech of a person, if you're dealing with a matter, if you're tackling an issue, يجب is obligated أن يكون بعلم وعدل, be based on knowledge. And base it with justice and adil, fairness. لا بجهل, don't base it with ignorance. وظلم and oppression. Like حال أهل البدع, like the situation of the people of innovation. That is what's known for the innovators. Rather this methodology that our brother took, which is that he judged, he's judging me on my heart. As though he has seen my heart. That I went there to become friends with them and to, to make unity with them. And this is, wallahi, this is the methodology of the Khawarij. It's not methodology of Ahlul Sunnah. Which is to judge the people by their nawaya, their intentions. Usama ibn Zaydin, he said, of the hadith of when he killed a man, after the man said, La ilaha illallah, Usama radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, when I told the messenger, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet said to him, أَفَلَا شَقَقْتَ عَنْ قَلْبِهِ Why didn't you open his heart? حَتَّى تَعْلَمَ So you can know أَقَالَهَا أَمْ لَا Whether he said it in his heart or not. فَمَا زَالَ يُكَرِّرُهَا The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم kept repeating that. حَتَّى تَمَنَّيْتُ Until I wished أَنِّي أَسْلَمْتُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ That I took Islam that day. And Imam al-Nawawi brought a benefit out from this. He said, فِيهِ in this hadith, uh, issue of Usama is دليل للقاعدة المعروفة في الفقه والأصول The principle that is known in the books of fiqh and in the fundamental books أصول الفقه which is أن الأحكام يعمل فيها بالظواهر That the ruling is based upon the apparent والله يتولى السرائر 
And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He's the one who overcomes or who takes what's inside the person's heart. That's Allah deals with that. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the one who deals with what's in within people's hearts. So the question is, how does the brother know I went there for that reason? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith, which Abu Dawood, Al-Tabarani, Al-Hakim, they narrated. And Imam Ahmed narrated and Sheikh Al-Albani authenticated it. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man qala fi mu'minin ma laysa fihi. Anyone who says about a believer that which is in him. أَسْكَنَهُ اللَّهُ رَدْغَةَ الْخَبَالِ حَتَّى يَخْرُجَ مِمَّا قَالَ Allah will make you live in the hellfire, especially in the place where the عُصَارَةُ أَهْلِ النَّارِ The waste that comes out of the people of the hellfire, where it accumulates and it comes together, you're going to stay there. Anyone who says about a mu'min, that which he hasn't said. Now my brother Abu Khadija, is, is he not scared of that hadith? To say about a mu'min, a um, inshallah ta'ala, a Muslim, that which he hasn't said, or that which he didn't think, or that which he didn't believe, you say it about him, are you scared of this hadith? Does it not worry you? Then our brother Abu Khadija went on to say, what you think, what you think you are Ibn Abbas? Did I say I was Ibn Abbas? Now I want to ask my brother Abu Khadija this question, directed at him. Because Ibn Abbas debated the Khawarij, does it mean that I believe I'm Ibn Abbas? Isn't that the methodology of the Khawarij? The Khawarij are the ones who do takfir. They necessitate it from the person's action. For example, the Khawarij would say, Fulan, he drinks, or so-and-so drinks alcohol, and the only reason why he drinks alcohol is because he sees it to be permissible, and because he sees it to be permissible, he's a kafir. All of those, all of that is lazimul madhab, and it's batil. That is the methodology of the khawarij. It is not the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah. We don't necessitate from somebody's action or their speech that which may be possible and not. We don't, we don't say that. We ask the person, unless he admits to it, that he, the reason why he did it is because of that, then we say. So somebody might be drinking alcohol because he sees it halal. And another person might be drinking it out of desires. Ahlul Sunnah don't do takfir of him. Just because he is mudmin. He's consistent upon drinking alcohol. So my point with our brother Abu Khadija is, Again, you're falling into traits which are, which are not known by Ahlul Sunnah. What you think, you're Ibn Abbas. In the video, I didn't say I was Ibn Abbas. The second thing is, just because I debated doesn't mean I believe I'm Ibn Abbas. And the third thing I wanted to say, inshallah ta'ala, is some people think that the debating is only for the ulama and the people of knowledge. And they're the only people they have to because Ibn Abbas was a person of knowledge and without a doubt a scholar should always be the one who does it whether it comes to debate even when it comes to teaching the scholars need to do that and the general mass and the students of knowledge should sit and learn Lakin, as they say if there isn't water the people use tayammum if the scholars aren't with us in the UK and they're not living with us, then the students of knowledge and the people who are seeking knowledge, who know a bit about the religion here and there, they will teach what they can according to their capacity and their, their ability. Our brother Abu Khadija, I can say to you, do you think you're Ibn Abbas for teaching religion? Do you think you're Abdullah Ibn Abbas for you to go out there to do khutbah? Rather, I could say to you, do you think you're the messenger of Allah to even do khutbah? And that is really, uh, it's a shubha or it's a point. It is something very pathetic, wallahi. Inshallah ta'ala, brother Abu Khadija. 
and our brother Abdulillahi Lahmami. I wanted to, inshallah ta'ala, advise both of you. Advice from a younger brother to brothers who are older than me in age. Abu Khadija, a while back, I heard a video or an audio of his where he mentions that he's been in the da'wah for 25 years. That is a long time. And Abu Abdullah, uh, our brother Abdulillahi, I don't know how long he's been in da'wah. But I wanted to advise you both. And the advice is taken from the young brother as well. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he mentions in his book, Al-Farq Bayna Al-Nasihati Wa Ta'ayir, he says, Wa kulluhum mu'tarifoon bi anna li'ihaatata bil'ilm. All the a'imma to sunnah and the scholars are all unanimously in agreement that to encompass knowledge, to have all of knowledge with you, min ghayri shududin, without anything being outside it, you have every knowledge thing, all of it is with you. All of the ulama are unanimously agreed upon that is, laysa, that is, that is not the true case. They know it. Laysa huwa martabatu ahadu minhum. None of them reached a point where all of knowledge is with him. The pre pious predecessors and the late comers, none of them ever said that we know everything. And I inshallah ta'ala don't think you both say that as well. Because of that, he said, because the Salaf knew that they weren't, they didn't compass all knowledge. The Salaf whose knowledge was unanimously agreed upon and their virtue, يَقْبَلُونَ الْحَقَّ They would accept the truth مِنْ مَنْ أَوْرَدَ عَلَيْهِمْ Anyone who transmitted it and passed it to them وَإِنْ كَانَ صَغِيرًا Even if he was young وَيُوصُونَ أَصْحَابَهُمْ And they would advise their students وَأَتْبَاعَهُمْ And their followers بِقَبُولِ الْحَقِّ That they accept the حق إِذَا ظَهَرَ فِي غَيْرِ قَوْلِهِمْ If it became apparent in other than their speech Now the teacher would say to them if somebody said the truth and it came from them and not me take it from them.